ethanol, and he fought it all the way, and he also fought against Social Security. He wanted to decimate it and voted against it three times. Voted against Social Security. That's a bad one. A lot of people don't know that, but I think they've been finding out over the last... He also voted to severely cut Medicare. I will not be cutting Medicare, and I will not be cutting Social Security. We're leaving the age rating. Ron was a disciple of Paul Ryan, who is a rhino loser who currently is destroying Fox and would constantly vote against entitlements. He would just vote against, remember that, the wheelchair over the cliffs. But Ryan, Paul Ryan's a big reason that Mitt Romney, I'm not a big fan of Mitt Romney, lost his election. And to be honest with you, Ron reminds me a lot of Mitt Romney. So I don't think you're going to be doing so well here, but we're going to find out. But those are the facts. Former President Donald Trump made his trip to Davenport, Iowa there to bash, well, partially to bash uh, Ron DeSantis' potential matchup he's got for a primary uh, there in the Republican side. And he's compared to Paul Ryan, Mitt Romney. Could be how many other loser rhinos can you possibly be connected to? Maybe because the way Fox News has been all over uh, uh, Ron DeSantis, he thinks Paul Ryan has something to do with that. Or maybe it's Mitt Romney. Who knows? He just throws things against the wall and see what sticks. Now, by the way, just to really rub it into his face, Ron DeSantis was just there, I guess, testing the waters. And he released this ad and Donald Trump said, I'm gonna step all over that. Let's watch what he was trying to promote. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is headed to Iowa today. He was received by a packed house, very enthusiastic crowd. When I see Iowans in Florida, they're happy. They love their state because it's well run. She had to make tough decisions in Iowa that were the right decisions. We both focused on protecting the lives and livelihoods and the freedoms of our citizens. And I'm just proud that when common sense suddenly became an uncommon virtue, uh, the state of Florida stood as a refuge of sanity. We chose freedom just like Iowa and we were right and they were wrong. Kind of looks like he's preparing to run for president. Showing up in Iowa, we know how the process goes. But then also talking about how amazing the people of Iowa were. When yesterday when he was tossing softballs with with Brian Kilmeade, he was talking about how everyone wants to go to Florida and everyone gets to Florida and they love it there. Which one is it? It doesn't matter. But everyone's happy as long as they're following behind Ron DeSantis, except for that same guy. Donald Trump, and if you noticed in the middle of those rants and those pushbacks and talking about social security laws and everything like that, that apparently is okay to talk about when you're criticizing some Republicans from the Republican side. But as we heard at the State of the Union, when President Biden said so, it was booze raining down. This is not happening. Where are the booze? Where are the booze? Is what I'm trying to figure out. We got one more piece that he, that uh, at least one more part about this whole thing, because again, I pointed out he called him Ron DeSanctis, I believe was one of those lines. He threw his way. I'm not sure what that really means, but apparently it works. There's someone else that isn't very happy with that name though, watch. Former President Trump uh, saying Ron DeSanctis, that's short for Ron DeSanctimonious, which is his nickname for the Florida governor. As you look live now in Iowa, the former president uh, getting ready for an event there in Davenport. Let's bring in Fox News chief political analyst, Britt Hume. Britt, I think we can expect a lot of this. Good evening, uh, this back and forth. And uh, you know, obviously the Florida governor is not in yet, but just finished his own trip to Iowa just recently. Yeah, this is just kind of two guys in the ring sort of striking out at each other with very long distance jabs so far. It's I think it's likely to get much more intense. It's going to be very interesting to see how uh, Ron DeSantis goes about trying to fend off Trump's attacks, which were so effective uh, against uh, Trump's rivals in 2016. Um, it remains to be seen what that strategy will be. So far, he's basically deflected them. Um, I don't know how long he can keep that up, but it'll be interesting to watch. Yeah, Ron DeSanctis, you think that's going to stick? The short right, well, for Ron DeSanctimonious? I, I don't think Ron DeSanctis sounds much different from Ron DeSantis. I'm not sure what the point of it is. I don't think, it, I don't think that hurts him in any way. <laughs> Britt says that because he almost said Ron DeSanctimonious when he was about to say Ron DeSantis. I don't know if you noticed that was. But the, the, the battle lines apparently are continue to be drawn, apparently. I mean, at some point, I assume Ron's got to swing back a little bit.
Yeah, I mean, it's obviously super early and, you know, Ron DeSantis has to worry about a lot more things than a couple of Donald Trump jazz. Mainly, you know, he's got to get the money in line and get certain type of key endorsees involved. But, you know, what strikes me about that Trump clip is that it, it, it harkens back to what his appeals were in 2016. I think in the aftermath of his shocking victory, uh, the tendency on the left, or at least among liberals, was that America is this insanely racist country, and it's the only reason Donald Trump won. And, and make no mistake, uh, a lot of his campaign rhetoric and the stuff he ran on um, did appeal to our worst instincts racially as a nation, particularly um, amongst our white American cohort. However, uh, a lot of the stuff that he was espousing was genuinely populist, right? Uh, he he had a political instinct that Social Security and Medicare are traditionally losers for Republicans because they're constantly trying to cut them. He pointed out how disastrous all these trade deals were um, for people in the heartland and um, people in the Rust Belt, et cetera. Like these are genuinely populist appeals. And I think a lot of people on the left tended to downplay those appeals, but Donald Trump knows those are winners. And that's why he's going right back to the well. He understands that seniors want to keep their social. In fact, they probably want more. And that seniors like their Medicare coverage. In fact, they probably want more. And he understands that Republicans or Democrats, nobody should be running on a campaign idea that you would be cutting those benefits. Well, the problem is, is once the primaries do happen, and you knew maybe if these guys end up meeting up head to head, it's gonna have to be at some point a discussion about these policy differences, which I gotta be honest, I don't see too many policy differences. So they have to find something to get mad at each other about because they're gonna deny, of course, as they did also in the chamber, as Biden pointed out, that they're not against those things. But when, as we've seen many proof, much proof of, they are. So all these disastrous policies have to come to light sooner or later. And I think many of them are gonna beating each other up over how bad these policies are and some of the things that Trump uh, disastrously pushed through like those tax cuts back in his term, his one term in office.